Welcome friends um, to my channel of the surgical education. Today I uh, uh, chose to you uh, a rare topic but it is um, an important one to have an idea, a basic idea uh, about, um, about it and that is tumors of the appendix. We know that appendicitis is uh, very uh, common and uh, often surgery um, is uh, needed to remove the uh, appendix, but uh, uh, apart from appendicitis, uh, tumors of the appendix they could happen. Uh, now, these tumors are um, not particularly common. Uh, they are rare tumors, and um, usually you will find that uh, uh, the one that we uh, find about in the pathology, the patient presents with acute appendicitis, and then we take the appendix out and uh, the pathologist will examine it under the microscope and find some carcinoid tumor. That's the scenario that we see with the carcinoid tumor. The stories could be a little bit different for non-carcinoid uh, tumors, which we will shed some light on today. Um, now these patients typically are people in their 40s or older who have their appendix as a result of appendicitis, and you uh, examine the appendix under the microscope and you find a uh, what we call a carcinoid tumor. The incidence of uh, uh, these cases is relatively rare. Uh, so it's about 1 in 300 cases when uh, you remove the appendix you will find a, a carcinoid and in majority of the cases more than 80% of the times it's benign and it's small, totally excised and you don't, don't need to do anything uh, more about that. Non-carcinoid tumor could present in the form of a mass in the right iliac fossa or uh, they can lead to small bowel obstruction and they present as such, but these uh, scenarios are pretty unusual. As I said, so majority of the tumors are uh, carcinoid. They are grade 1 according to the WHO classification of the neuroendocrine uh, tumors, similar to the neuroendocrine tumors that arise in the small bowel and uh, the uh, pancreas and uh, elsewhere on rare uh, occasions. The other entity is the non-carcinoid. The majority of them are mucinous tumors. Uh, they could be either mucinous or colonic type of uh, uh, adenocarcinomas. Uh, but the mucinous are more uh, common and uh, uh, they usually are seen in older people. They are more common in older people than uh, the uh, carcinoid uh, uh, tumors. So what's carcinoid? Carcinoid is a tumor of the neuroendocrine uh, cells that uh, uh, are uh, prevalent in the gastrointestinal tract. They also are, are called the enterochromaffin cells. Um, the term carcinoid has been uh, coined uh, to them uh, a long time ago because of their behavior. They do behave usually in an indolent uh, benign form, but sometimes they can be malignant and metastasized. So the uh, classification, the original one, uh, considered them as uh, semi-malignant. That's why the term uh, carcinoid. As I said, uh, typically these uh, are discovered in patients who have got acute appendicitis and the majority of them are limited to the appendix, which means removing the appendix is curative. There is a rare variant of the uh, carcinoid tumor, uh, and that's midway between adenocarcinoma and neuroendocrine tumors. And this variant is called goblet cell carcinoid or goblet cell adenocarcinoma sometimes. So it is a type of carcinoid, so it should be called goblet cell carcinoid. It does behave in a malignant fashion and it could metastasize uh, if you uh, catch them in their early stages as a result of appendicitis occurring at some stage uh, that uh, treatment could be curative and they usually require more than just a simple appendicectomy because if the tumor uh, with the carcinoid, when these tumors are less than one centimeter, they're localized to the appendix, uh, particularly if they are at the tip of the appendix, which is a common scenario, usually the appendicectomy will be curative and uh, no, no further treatment is uh, needed. There is one thing that is a curious uh, phenomena where uh, about 18% of patients who have got carcinoid in the appendix, they could have a second 
primary tumor like colon cancer or polyps in the uh, colon. Hence, when these patients are found, uh, if we find a carcinoid uh, after an appendectomy, we do advise the patient to have uh, colonoscopy uh, and uh, remove the polyps that they have uh, and if they have got advanced uh, neoplasia and that need to be uh, treated uh, accordingly. No one knows why that uh, happens in fact but it is one of those uh, uh, phenomena in medicine that we have to be uh, aware of. Now occasionally the patients will need to have a what is a right hemicolectomy with lymph node dissection a formal uh, type of surgery that we do for cancer of the uh, right uh, uh, colon. Uh, now there, in the indication or the conditions that we need to uh, fulfill uh, to uh, recommend for the patients, having a right hemicolectomy will be if they have a tumor bigger than two centimeters, if the tumor is actually invading the meso. Uh, uh, the base of the appendix, rather, and uh, there might be a positive margin, and also if there is invasion of the mesoappendix. The appendix has got small mesentery in which runs the blood vessels and the lymphatics, and if the tumor has invaded that, then we do recommend a uh, right hemicolectomy, uh, and also in the case of positive uh, uh, margin. Also, if the histology is a little bit more aggressive than the usual carcinoid tumor, such as the goblet cell carcinoid or the high-grade carcinoid, which is very uncommon, or adenocarcinoma, then we will uh, recommend for the patient to have a right uh, hepatectomy. Metastases with neuroendocrine tumor and the carcinoid are uh, reasonably uh, rare, and uh, uh, if they happen, uh, they will be amenable to surgical uh, and other forms of uh, treatment. Now, patients with uh, carcinoid, with uh, other than carcinoid tumor, which is the adenocarcinoma and mucinous tumors, their treatment is a bit different because they could spread uh, into the peritoneal cavity. And uh, in addition to the right hemicolectomy, they might require uh, what is called a hyperthermic intraperitoneal uh, chemotherapy, which is done in an open uh, fashion for people who've got. Uh, mucinous tumor or other forms, uh, in fact, of tumor limited to the uh, peritoneal uh, cavity as a result of uh, peritoneal seeding from a variety of uh, tumors. Now, the non-carcinoid tumors are relatively uh, rare, uh, fortunately, and uh, uh, majority of them are mucinous adenocarcinoma, and uh, uh, typically they uh, present in the form of appendicitis in older patients. Um, the histology could be variable. Mucinous adenocarcinoma is the most common. Colonic type of adenocarcinoma, which will behave exactly like colon cancer, is the second one. And signatory cell cancer is pretty uh, rare. In general, if anyone get diagnosed with non-carcinoid uh, uh, tumor in the appendix, cancer of the appendix, the 50%, uh, the, the five year survival is about 50% uh, uh, of the cases. With mucinous tumors, uh, we will be able to diagnose them on a CT scan uh, if they happen to have a CT scan before their operation. And what you can see here is just basically a rounded uh, 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 structure filled with uh, a fluid which has the density, uh, low density, which is the density of uh, water in it due to the uh, mucine secretion. So it would appear typically like that on a uh, CT scan. If someone has got a mucinous tumor of the uh, appendix, and in that case, it is called a mucosil. Now, the mucosil of the appendix is a general term because some of them are uh, benign and they just appear uh, or happen as a result of obstruction of the uh, appendix. Uh, and some of them can be borderlines uh, of borderline malignancy and others can be fully uh, malignant, with, uh, uh, which can lead to widespread and metastases. Uh, and that will all depend on how they appear under the microscope. Um, if they are benign or low-grade appendicectomy will be uh, enough uh, as uh, a uh, treatment. 
Um, so mucosal is generally defined as uh, when the, when the uh, appendix is distended, like this MRI picture of the appendix, that is distended as a result of blockage by a tumor, uh, and rarely just by uh, inflammatory stricture, uh, and that will lead to uh, excessive secretion of mucus that fills the cavity, which will expand gradually. Majority of tumors that are less than two centimeters are benign, and they are cured by appendicectomy uh, on its own. But sometime we will need to do a rhyotomy, uh, colectomy, and that will happen if the base of the appendix happened to uh, be involved at, uh, when looked at under the uh, microscope. There is a problem, which is uh, fortunately rare, that the uh, tumor could uh, rupture and then it can seed along the peritoneal cavity, which will lead to uh, masses in the ovaries and also lead to what we call pseudomyxoma peritone. And pseudomyxoma peritone typically uh, present as abdominal uh, distension, bloating, uh, increasing size of the uh, abdomen occasionally in the form of a small bowel obstruction, and when you image the patient, you find they have got uh, low uh, fluid density all over the peritoneal uh, uh, cavity, not uh, located to uh, one part of the uh, of the peritoneal uh, cavity, which means that, this, that patients will need uh, uh, probably uh, repeated uh, attacks uh, uh, with. Uh, the bulking of the tumor and intraperitoneal chemotherapy. So that's how they would uh, appear under uh, a direct vision. If you take the appendix and if you put a mus in uh, secreting a tumor, it would be filled with the mucousy material that you can see on this uh, uh, specimen. Uh, and uh, if the patient had a CT scan, you'll be able to recognize that and also uh, the CT scan will show you if there is pseudomyxoma peritone. Uh, and then these tumors, uh, because majority of them are either low grade or intermediate, they do, are not associated with uh, metastases. The colonic type of adenocarcinoma is more likely to metastasize, but the mucinous type is likely to recur locally inside the uh, peritoneal uh, cavity. And as I said, they can lead to a problematic pseudomyxoma peritone, where the peritoneal cavity uh, keeps uh, uh, producing a lot of mucine because the epithelial cells would uh, disseminate and seed on the peritoneal cavity and continue to produce the uh, mucin. I hope that have been a useful uh, session and a good lesson uh, to take a few points from and uh, uh, it will help you in your uh, practice in the future. Uh, I'm glad you have been with me in this uh, video and I look forward to see you in the future.